Hey guys, so, um, why don't I just do like the influencer gasp, like not gasp, but like the, oh. Can we see her? I don't, I can't see anything in the viewfinder, honestly. Phoebe, please. You've been such a major part of these videos for the last few videos. Say hello to everyone and then say goodbye to everyone. Okay, so. I actually have been gone for like a week uh, because all the news has been so dark recently and I just now got around to kind of, I guess, filming it. I'm here to film the eight passenger stuff. I just, <sighs> hot take, hot, hottest take of all hot takes. Now, if you guys disagree with me, let's keep it all civil. Let's not argue and let's not, you know, do anything crazy here. Um, I just didn't want to be one of those people that posts like a brand new 10 minute, long video every single day going going over some new piece of evidence that comes out like that to me 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 feels almost as exploitative as being a family channel myself like what's the difference really between yes i get that like it stems from the parents if they don't post the content we don't have anything to talk about but the parents exploiting everyday life of these children is kind of just as bad well the other way around but you guys get what i'm saying as us now seeing a child abuse case and exploiting every piece of it for views and content instead of just putting it all into one video because obviously five videos let's say three four five six seven eight videos makes more money than just one longer video like even if you add even if you let's say put three mid rolls on each of those videos right and then so you end up with 15 mid rolls across five videos and you put 15 mid rolls into your one main video like you're gonna make more money from those five separate videos of three mid rolls than that one long video of 15 mid rolls. Like that's just kind of how it goes. You're gonna get more money because you're getting more views. So I just almost felt a little bit like when the case first broke, I could have, you know, um, Feeblicious, I'm going to be so honest with you. This beanbag is so small. We're like barely fitting in. I'm gonna be so honest with you. So yes, let's all stay stable like a table. Um, Okay, I'll give you a hug. This all just... Why does she do this when I go to turn on the camera? It sounds like she knows that, like, she's getting attention right now from a bunch of people. Okay, Phoebe. Well, everyone loves you, so that's all that counts. I just felt like when the case first broke, like, yeah, I could have done a big, oh my god, Ruby arrested. And that's not really a big problem if people did do that. But to then, like, obviously I knew more information was going to come out. When news like that breaks, like, day one, we're getting, like, snippets of information. And I knew that within the week, we would have the story... We would have the story somewhat outlined in a more cohesive way with more people speaking out, the police department speaking out. So there was really no point of me coming out day one just to film a 10 minute long video with three mid-rolls to be like, Hey guys, Ruby got arrested. Let's wait for what happens next. And then the next day, another 10 minute long video saying, guys, a police recording came out. Let's stretch this out to 10 minutes. And then the day after being like, and now the neighbors spoke out. Let's stretch this out. to Like it just to me felt wrong to do that. But that's me. That's a subjective wrong, right, correct, not correct. Also known as incorrect, morally right, morally wrong. Like all of that is is, is for all of us individually to decide. So I'm not here to like cancel anyone. If people are filming content about this, it's perfectly fine. It's just, I just wanted to wait, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Anyway, um, and not that that makes me a superior person or a morally better person or a more ethical person. Like there is nothing more or less about any of this. It's just different. People are approaching this in a bunch of different ways and no one's really gonna agree on what way is the right way. So that's just kind of, but that was just my little hot take about, I guess, an explanation for why I waited so long to address this. So I guess the first um, time that I saw this was on the Fox 13 Salt Lake City um, website. And it's kind of like a more local news site, obviously to where they live. And it just said, eight passengers mother arrested for aggravated child abuse. So it says that eight passengers mother, Ruby Frank, I never know if it's Frank or Frankie, so I'm just gonna say Ruby, and Jody Hildebrandt of the Parent Counseling Service Connections were arrested Wednesday night for two counts each of aggravated child abuse. Now, since then, those two counts each have been made into six counts each, and I'm assuming that might be for all six of the children, despite, obviously, um, Sherry being 18 now, uh, well, above the age of 18, and Chad being either really close to 18 or had just turned 18, like, they were still children when they were being abused, allegedly. Uh, so... 
Um, all of this have been bumped up to six, and I'm assuming that is one count per child that they have. Um, because obviously eight passengers, two parents, six children, they have six children. So um, that would make sense um, that it's not just going to be the two children that were like allegedly abused for the longest. They're going to look through now everything and them documenting their whole life. I mean, definitely didn't help. And Sherry has been putting on Instagram. She's essentially asked to fill out this Google Docs folder with any evidence of clips that you have that have been deleted off the internet because all of the channels are gone now. So she is asking for more evidence and uh, you can't even like access that Google Docs account. People add thousands of things to it so if you guys have anything that you want to add um i'll try and like link the google docs in the description if you have any clips that are super like bad you can obviously add them in there if you want and then that will help cherry build more of a case against her parents which obviously is something that is going to be super satisfying for her as much as it's obviously very sad it's also going to be super satisfying for her to be able to have this documented like this is such a double-edged sword in the sense that it was abuse in itself to exploit the children for views and money on the internet and views and money that those children were never going to benefit from. But it is now, on the edge of the sword, a great resource for these children to get the justice that they deserve. So a lot of children of, of abuse don't have that kind of documentation. Um, you don't have every mean thing that your parents say to you, every, you know, you know, every time they hit you, everything like that. Like people don't have that, which is usually why CPS only really acts when things get very extreme to the point where doctors are getting involved and you get medical assessments done and that's obviously not where you want to draw the line like you want to be able to find out about abuse as soon as it's happening so you can help the children so in this case like they have documented their own abusive tendencies that these kids can now use to get justice and i think that will be quite satisfying for sherry and hopefully the children when they grow up as well so they were placed in custody for intentionally or knowingly committing aggravated child abuse at 9 30 p.m so um the springville fire department responded to a mutual aid incident in Hildebrandt's residence in Springville at 3.44 p.m. for nearly two hours. It's not yet known if the incident is related to Frankie and Hildebrandt's arrest six hours later. So they were there already at 3 p.m. and then they came back at um, 9 p.m. So Ruby was behind the eight passengers um, YouTube channel, which had nearly 2.3 million subs, which is absolutely insane that 2.3 million people watched that content and saw absolutely nothing wrong with it. That terrifies me. Um, and I hope those people now are seeing how bad that was. She's also a member of the business team division of Connections, a parenting and business counseling service. Now, Jodi is the founder of that company whose mission statement reads, we invite, encourage healing and facilitate personal growth through impeccable honesty, rigorous personal responsibility and vulnerable humility. That is a whole load of nothing. I was gonna say shit, a whole load of nothing. Like that said everything and nothing at the same time. For $75 a week, the company provides 90 minute group sessions moderated by Hildebrandt to empower each other to heal and change. But they also offer counseling for businesses with an 18 week program on company leadership for almost $15,000. Now, Jody has had her license suspended on, I believe multiple occasions for trying to ruin people's lives. And there are people speaking out that she would spread lies about them in the church to other religious people try to essentially cut them off from their support systems. And there was a man who she lied about having a porn addiction so that she could destroy his marriage. There's a lot going on that isn't right about them. Then we have Fox 13 Salt Lake City again, uh, then updated and put out another article a few hours later saying childhood climbed out of window for help leads to arrest of eight passengers mother and this is where we found out the extent of what was happening so police say children were found with severe malnourishment neglect and abuse so new information shows that a child climbed out of a window to get help which led to the discovery of abuse arresting documents detail that the arrest was made after a child climbed out of a window of an Evans residence Ivans Evans at around 10 50 a.m wednesday and ran to a neighbor's home for help the home belonged to jody hildebrandt who is involved with a parent counseling service so they were the two children the two youngest children were Jody's house and Ruby wasn't there at the time but the police have looked through and in a vlog Ruby was at the residence a few days earlier so she can't even use the defense of like oh I'm um, I left Jody to care after the children while I went and did something and this abuse only happened like while I was gone because she was there a few days earlier and those marks on the children would have been still there a few days like they couldn't have healed over the last few days the child knocked on the door and asked for food and water but the neighbor noticed duct tape on the child's ankles and wrists and called police documents state the calling party stated that the juvenile appeared to be em emaciated em 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 how do you even pronounce that i always struggle with that emaciated emaciated 
and malnourished with open wounds and duct tape around the extremities. A statement from local authorities reads, police described the wounds, neglect and malnourishment of the child to be severe. Arresting documents state, and the child was taken to the hospital for treatment. After the first child was taken to the hospital, another child was discovered in the home and was found to be malnourished as well. So a search warrant was obtained by the police and during the search of the home, evidence was located consistent with the markings found on the juvenile, AKA duct tape and rope, which is disgusting to hear. I'm gonna read other articles and get onto like other points, but this could have ended if, if the child hadn't managed to run away to like on that specific day or any of the other days like that was probably the only chance they had because Jodie was probably like out the house doing something that I don't know how often they got left alone but just the fact that he was able to escape and go get help like I don't know if another opportunity like that would have come up anytime soon and we don't know how else like how much further this abuse would have been taken and if the injuries were already severe now and the malnourishment was already severe now I just hate to think what would have happened if he wasn't able to escape and get help for him and his sister like that's just kind of you know Arresting documents state that Frankie was seen on YouTube video filmed in residence just days before the incident, which adds to Miss Frankie being present in the home and having knowledge of the abuse, malnourishment and neglect. Now, she did not speak with police and instead requested a lawyer arrest information reports. She was ordered to be held without bail in the Washington County Jail. So bail was actually rejected by the judge. So the Department of uh, Child and Family Services was contacted. A statement from the Santa Clara Evans Public Safety Department reads, and in a joint effort with the Springville Police Department, four minor children were taken into the care of the Department of Child and Family Services. They're not with other family members. And I know some people that don't really, are not too aware of um, this whole family and how they run. They were wondering, you know, what's up with Kevin? Kevin was the husband and he was actually alleged, like they were separated and people don't know if he left on his own accord or if Jody manipulated Ruby into kicking him out and separating, but they haven't been wearing like wedding bands and they haven't been living together for a while. And Chad actually lives with Kevin. Now Sherry's at uni on her own and the four children were kind of with Jody and Ruby, but that's kind of how they were split up. Kevin actually worked at BYU and he was recently fired from that or like terminated in some way because his information is not on the website anymore and people are saying oh you know why don't why doesn't kevin take care of the children now i don't know if you guys remember but a lot of the emotional abuse and the exploitation was happening while he was in the home just because he wasn't the one duct taping his children and and putting rope around them doesn't mean that he wasn't abusive he did co-sign sending chad to that uh, wilderness program for god knows how long to sleep on the ground and get traumatized. Like just because Chad is now with Kevin and everything's like allegedly okay or hopefully okay. And just because he wasn't here for like the extreme end of this situation doesn't mean he wasn't exploiting the children at the beginning. I just don't know if he's the best person to leave the children with because his methods of discipline were also really, really bad. Um, so, you know, they used to have to like pay money to get their homework back. Explain the rules to this. Seven. We're done. Two. So you're all like, what? I have your attention now. Mm -hmm. Is that it? You're okay. all gonna listen. There, so. If you have something in the bag that you would like out, you can pay cash for it. So you learn the value of your items, or um, you can give what? Dad, I'll let you take the conversation um, from here. You can. <laughs> do an equivalent value chore to get it back. What's it? And whatever isn't claimed by the end of the day goes in the garbage. You know what I mean? Like there's just a lot going on. Frank's oldest daughter, Sherry, had made a post on her Instagram account with a photo of police captioned, finally. She will later add another story with the following statement. Hi all, today has been a big day. Me and my family are so glad justice is being served. We've been trying to tell the police and CPS for years about this and so glad they finally decided to step up. Kids are safe, but there's a long road ahead. Please keep them in your prayers and also respect their privacy. One of the sisters of Ruby had actually posted a bit of a statement about this, but got a lot of hate for it and ended up deleting it. But she did also speak out on Instagram um, and basically just said that they had spent years trying to get help for these children but obviously cps doesn't act when they should so it was very difficult and i do feel bad i think they're getting a lot of hate like you know oh why don't you do anything sooner or or whatever but it's difficult it is difficult without proof to get anything to get going you know like there's just it cps just doesn't work in ways that it should then we have a uh, more recent article daily mail online said exclusive youtuber mum ruby husband is seen at Utah House of Horrors where she is accused of abusing her two children. So he was seen recently that people took pictures of him. Disturbing details emerged that reveal how Ruby and Kevin's children were allegedly subjected to strenuous chores 
uh, during scorching temperatures. Kevin is married to Ruby who managed the Eight Passages YouTube channel and um, obviously Ruby and Jodie were arrested. So the husband was seen pacing around outside of the Utah family home on Saturday. But Ruby's husband, who she shares six children with, was seen at the property on Saturday as a man came to remove the YouTube branding from the van parked outside. The neighbors told Daily Mail that they had been concerned about the children's well-being and once saw the kids left outside pulling weeds for hours during triple digit temperatures. There's a picture of him um, and there's a picture of Ruby's house. This is the house, a magnificent, like massive house that she got through the exploitation of her children. And bear in mind, Kevin reaped the benefits of this channel just as much. He also got to live in this beautiful house um, because they exploited their children every day and then proceeded to abuse them. So they spoke to one of Hildebrandt's neighbors whose home is also in the Cayenta community located at the base of the Red Mountains in Utah. They recalled seeing Frankie's um, eight passenger van regularly parked in front of the home at the time. One thing we noticed and we told the police the same thing, six to eight weeks ago when it was really hot, I was outside in the late morning um, afternoon pulling weeds and over at Jody's house, several kids were also outside of their home um, pulling weeds. So they were pulling out weeds at Jody's house, not even their own house, like Jody's house. Not that it would make it better, but they it's just so weird to me. Over the course of the day, the temperature was over 100 degrees and I gave up after a while because it was so hot, but I noticed that the kids stayed out, stayed out there. Um, the resident also noted how they never heard any sounds coming from the home, such as those of children playing outside, which he thought was unusual. Uh, yeah, with like four children left, you would hear noise. Like those children would be playing if they were happy. On one day, a child is thought to have escaped through a window of a home uh, before running to a neighbor who then called the police. The neighbor said that they believed the child picked that particular home after they had been given cookies by them at Christmas time and knew them to be friendly and safe enough to go to them for help. Both Ruby and Hildebrandt have been previously criticized for their teachings on parenting, collaborating on Hildebrandt's life counseling service connections. Everyone is just breathing a collective sigh of relief because we thought they were going to come out of the house with body bags. Now saying that, why wouldn't you call the police? Unless they tried, I don't want to be a meanie bobini, like I don't want to bring negativity to this, but if you see children being treated in a certain way, like you call the police every day until the police gets pissed off and finally does something about it. So a male neighbor explained, I remember that she took away their Christmas one year and she would say things like, they're not repenting correctly, which is a Mormon term for their sinning, just complete insanity. The local residents also told how Ruby would interfere in the lives of the neighbors. One recalled an incident where Frankie lectured a neighbor over what she deemed to be inappropriate posters of women posing in shorts that were on display in a garage. Someone's garage. Um, Phoebe. I think she thinks I'm stressed out. Like I think she thinks I'm really anxious. Okay, Phoebe, thank you so much. Um, I'm so not anxious anymore. Kevin is believed to have been kicked out of the family home last year. He said earlier this week that he is trying to keep his children together following the arrests. Kevin's attorney, Randy S. Kester, told Page Six his client's urgent focus is simply to keep his children together under his fatherly care. Four minor children were taken into the care of child and family services for following the police's investigation. It's unconfirmed if the children were related to either Frankie Hood, what? That is, this is why I don't trust the Daily Mail. They were all Frankie's children. Once Kevin had departed the family home, one neighbor said it appeared the children stopped going to school with one of the daughters knocking on the doors of other homes in the neighborhood that had kids. Yes, yeah, so I remember at one point, Ruby had said in the connections like program that she's homeschooling her children because of what she is seeing in schools. I'm excited because I'm, I'm homeschooling all my kids now and it's fun. It's enjoyable. I pulled them from school and, and we've had um, some really great experiences so far. We, my girls were talking over the Christmas break and I was hearing some of, I, I'll call it control that's been going on in their classrooms. And I was, I mean, I want to say I was shocked, but I mean, I shouldn't say I was shocked because I, <laughs> you know, I, I've known this stuff has been going on. And obviously that came after like her trying to petition to have the song change that they had for their like end of year flash mob because she didn't think that Flo Rida was like appropriate. Okay, so you approved this song that has all of these lyrics in it. And she says, well, we're not singing, we're not dancing to those lyrics. It's just a portion. And she says, I, I think it's really great because um, I actually really like it because um, Smith's used it in their commercial. It's part of pop culture. It's all over the place. And I said, so your standard, what you um, allow in your school is pop culture, what the kids really like and what shows up in commercials. That's your standard. Yes. Yes. That's what, that's what I, if it's agreeable to the public at large, then it's okay in the school. And I said, that's really disappointing 
that is so disappointing because I would hope that the principle where my kids go to school, that, that the standard would be truth, that the standard would be principles, that the standard would be um, morality. She would just uh, knock on your door and say, hi, can you kids play? And we're like, well, they're at school. They won't be home for three or four hours. And she'd be like, oh, wait, she's like this lost child. The neighbor recounted. I'm really angry because I spoke up. Other people spoke up and nothing happened. Another female neighbor explained. So, I mean, that kind of explains it. I want those kids to know that the community loves them and wants them to be safe. If people knew the amount of tears and time spent talking to law enforcement and CPS over the last year, I want people to understand that. And I want those kids to know that because I think they thought they were abandoned. Um, this is so heartbreaking. The condition of the juvenile was so severe that they were seen by Santa Clara Evans EMS and transported to a local area hospital. This is actually Jody's house. It literally looks like a compound and it makes me sick that she also made so much money, enough money to buy a house like this um, from destroying people's lives to then continue to destroy lives of children in said house. Like it's disgusting. And then the, this article basically goes over the previous controversies of like, you know, the sending him to the wilderness camp, making him sleep in the living room, taking away the room, uh, not packing lunches for young children and then letting them starve during the day. Like just everything that we've been talking about for the last like four years, honestly. And then the last one is an independent article that said mommy blogger Ruby's neighbors feared police would pull body bags from her home. So allegedly Ruby, papered over her home's windows and would spend weeks away while her children fended for themselves. And this is actually what a lot of people said. There was this like rumor going around. It wasn't really a rumor. It was Sherry who was talking to, um, she was posting statements on like a Facebook page and it was under a post by a source. But because Sherry was like confirming it by commenting under it, it made it look more real. Like that was probably some kind of family member. That sentence made no sense. This was from a source on Facebook that was unconfirmed until Sherry, one of the daughters, commented under it saying basically like, thank you for speaking out. And then we kind of realized that the source was confirmed to be someone who's like in the know in the family. And they did say that Ruby was leaving the children unattended for like long periods of time. So in this article, it says that she's a 41 year old mother of six and was arrested this week and charged with six counts of aggravated child abuse after one of her sons escaped her home and sought help. Uh, so apparently past welfare checks were rejected by by Ruby, which is why CPS wasn't like reacting. But how do you get called to a child abuse allegation? And because the parent who's allegedly abusing the children says no to a welfare check, you just proceed to not go through with the welfare check. Like the whole point is that the children are being abused by the parent who's saying no to the welfare check. I just, I'm very confused actually. But yeah, that's essentially it. Those are all the updates. I just wanted to put it all into kind of like one video. And um, I just, yeah, I guess we'll just kind of see where this case goes from this point onwards. And I hope that everyone gets the help that they need, the safety that they need, the support that they need. Um, and yeah. So a little editing update, even if I'm not the one doing the editing is popping in now. And I said I wouldn't do multiple videos about this in short succession. Like maybe I'll film another one kind of in a week from now or two weeks when, you know, whenever something bigger happens, but I don't want to do these like, oh, a little extra eight minute long video on just like this tiny little thing. So it's actually isn't tiny, but since I filmed my video, um, a court hearing over Zoom has been done with both Jody and Ruby. And it kind of looked similar to like the Nikita Dragon one where they literally just lay out like, what the case is, um, you know, how many charges there are, et cetera, et cetera. And just kind of ask for comment from Ruby and Jody, um, figure out if bail is going to happen. Bail is in fact not happening. And Kevin was also in the Zoom call. Sherry was in the Zoom call, which is obviously kind of interesting. And, in, in, you know, the lawyers were in the Zoom call and they had asked um, Ruby, you know, for comment. And I don't really feel comfortable talking about this in much, much detail. You guys can read more about this, you know, in different articles and Reddit and many different places. But essentially Ruby is blaming the alleged abuse on the children, which I know sounds absolutely batshit crazy. Um, she is essentially alleging that one of the children is an abuser themselves um, and abused the siblings and other kids in the neighborhood and other kids in school. And therefore she's insinuating that the abuse and the isolation, the duct taping and all of that was for the safety of others. And um, that they had been consuming content to do with this abuse since they were three years old and which led them to actually then acting it out and then acting out on a younger sibling and then the two siblings acting it out on other people. Now, I think, you know, in my non-professional opinion, this doesn't help Ruby at all, if true. I mean, if true, it shows that that child most likely went through that sort of abuse themselves to then know about this abuse at the age of three and be able to do it on other people. Three-year-olds don't know about this 
at all unless they are shown it by someone or come across it by accident if your three-year-old is coming across that kind of content by accident then you're not no, you're not doing a good enough job as a parent shielding them from said content so she said that they were consuming this content at three and then acted on it um i believe if this is true there is a chance that this child was going through that kind of abuse themselves by a, maybe an older family member um, and then knew to act it out and seek it out on the internet. What also boggles my mind is Ruby has made it very clear that, you know, in the Mormon kind of lifestyle and the very strict parenting, those children were like not allowed phones. The only times, she, you know, there are vlog clips of her discussing that the only times they're allowed to speak on the phone is if they use like the home phone in the kitchen that is heard by everyone in the whole house. Um, the only times they can use the phone or like internet or the the computer is the home computer in the living room that everyone can see and everyone can look into. So I would love to know how a three-year-old had enough access to a phone and internet to access content of inappropriate nature. So that shows that even despite her like harping on these like discipline methods, she was not actually taking the care. I don't know, this is weird. Like she was punishing these kids and not letting them call their friends, but somehow a kid was able to slide a phone out somewhere and you know what I mean? And also how is a three-year-old searching this up? Clearly this is something that they've been shown by someone or something they've been taught by someone else. Once again, this is not the dunk on her children that she thought it was. And if your child is exhibiting such behavior, first of all, you figure out where this behavior is coming from. And second of all, you take them to a psychiatrist so that they can figure out where this behavior is coming from and to deal with it in a responsible manner. The way to deal with this is not to sweep it under the rug, not look for the source and then duct tape them, homeschool them and keep them away from everyone else. That is not the way that you deal with this behavior. And to me, this is not an excuse for abusing her children, neglecting her children and her parenting style. So this like slam dunk against her own children that she thought she just did in court actually makes her look like an even more irresponsible and deranged parent that's the very depressing editing update um that's it let me know what you guys think about anything you know anything else you've seen that maybe i've missed um put it all in the description not in the description in the comments and obviously i'll link the google docs documents if you have any clips that you want thank you so much Phoebe. so if you have any clips that you want to add for sherry to be able to show the police then go ahead and do that but i'm sure all the main ones have already been posted quite a few times so that's it i'll see you guys in my next one bye guys Thank you.